this is an introduction. I don't normally bring my computer up here. But I want you to see, for those of you that do watch the videos, the lion's share of what you see comes from this computer. Nothing overly sophisticated. And for those of you that want to do stuff on social media, we're here to help you. Does everybody understand? If you have a desire to do something on social media, we'll help you. Because that's important. Because there's only, there's only one pulpit. Yeah. That's right. Everybody cannot come up to the pulpit. I promise you when I'm not here, I got pulpits other places. Some of them are in the street, some of them are in front of a camera, some of them in somebody's house. Amen. Administering the presence of God. Because remember, when we're talking about kingdom extension, kingdom extension means it goes beyond what happens here. Here is a catalyst for what has to happen out there. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we want you to be fired up about using what God has already given you. Now, again, to piggyback on what I said earlier, every time I do something within the parameters of this church, there's always a reason. So when people come up to the altar, there's a reason why we lay hands as much as we do. Hallelujah. For me, it's not, it's not a waste of time. And let me give you a word of advice. If you want to be used of God, you need to start using what you already have. Amen. God is a wise steward of his power and his authority. And if it's going to sit there dormant, why should he give you any more? I want you to think about that for a minute. Hallelujah. So nothing is wasted. Because when you become faithful with what God's already given you, you open up the door for more. Amen. That's real simple. Now the enemy would love to get you to a point of fear where you don't do anything. Right. Now listen, you don't have to do everything according to somebody else's ability. You have to do things according to the grace and the ability that you have. Does everybody understand that? Amen. And I think that's important. Because life can be very exciting when you just start being used of God. Yes. Well, God. Now, for the sake of tonight, I know you like to move around. I'm going to try to stay at one spot. But if it does not happen, so be it. Okay. Okay. Hallelujah. Years ago, I used to be very shy. But that's, that's I guess those days are gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. My wife thinks I'm lying through my teeth when I tell her. But I tell you what. God will make you bold. Yes. Yes. Now this is the thing. When you go out there and evangelize, and we're going to tie this together ultimately what we want to talk about. When you go out there and evangelize, you have to understand that who you carry is who is what is what and who people need. Yes. You don't have to apologize to people for giving them the gospel. Yeah. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. When you have the understanding that who you possess and who you represent is what they need. Then it needs to alleviate the fear. It needs to, to, to just wipe that out of the box. Now this is the thing. When you sow seed, as far as talking to people, don't worry about whether they receive everything or not. You planted a seed. Yeah. One plants, one waters, God gives the increase. Yeah. All we need to do is conduit. Somebody say conduits. You need to be channels of the presence of God and the word of God wherever you go. And that's powerful, y'all. Yes. Now, in this particular church, we have a divine assignment. Every one of you in here have a divine assignment. You are strategically here in this building for a purpose. And I'm not just talking about tonight. I'm talking about if God has sent you here, you have a strategic purpose for what is going to happen in these last days. Somebody say last days. Last days. Last days. Last days. Last days. Thank you, Jesus. So we, we're laying the foundation. Now, what we're going to talk about tonight may not seem like we're going to get there, but we're hoping we're going to get there. <laughs> All right? So now I'm picking back in on something that Pastor Matt just said a little while ago. Before we left Dallas to come here, we gave away all of our furniture. 
We didn't sell anything. We trusted God that ultimately it was going to work out for us. Me personally, I didn't put a time limit on it because I understand seed time and harvest time. Now, if you look at some of our videos, you'll discover that there's some going back within the early part of the time we came here look kind of jacked up. <laughs> That's because I was using one of those little Android phones. <laughs> that, I, believe me, I had to be creative in order to do videos on them. Because the camera that we had, I showed you the seed to, to one of my son and daughters in, in, in Dallas. And trusted the process. Now, God tells somebody else to bless us with another one in the beginning part of the year. I'll throw up our city. That's why you see an upgrade in quality. Because we don't we believe in, in the, the power of sowing seed. It is not everything that's not about money. Sometimes it can be food. One thing you can guarantee, if you feed people, you won't starve. That's for sure. So listen, these are kingdom principles. And Brenda will tell you something, and I'm going to tie this to what we want to talk about tonight. A lot of times over the years, and this was before I met Brenda. A lot of times when it came to sowing seed, I didn't just give to the church. I sowed specifically into many women of God. Why? Because according to Philippians 1 and 7, and according to, to Matthew chapter 10, verses 40 to 41, you receive a prophet's reward, you're partakers of grace. Now, those of you that trip with that, have had it. But it works for me. Because I, because listen, when God has called men and women of God, there's a grace that every man and woman of God carries. Does everybody understand that? They don't do, they don't just do stuff happenstance. They have an ability that God gives them. The ministry itself is based upon the grace of what happens here. So we just do it. And I live like that. Some people have problems, but I can't tell you all the times that people just walked up to me and just said, I just want to show you the grace that's in your life. Don't, I didn't manipulate them to do anything. Seriously. I want you to understand. I did not manipulate. Didn't ask. But they do that. Parking lots. <laughs> come inside the church. Every place. People just do that. They just say they just want to be a blessing. But I do that all the time. I'm not really up listening. Because I, I understand the importance of kingdom giving. Yeah. Now when we started our ministry years ago in Dallas. We sold a lot of seed. And we had some lead times while well, we, was, we was trusting to believe God. And the truth be told, sometimes we are tested even with that even this day. But God has always been faithful. <clears throat> Does everybody understand that? Because it's not about us. Because if you're going to ever do anything with God, you can't be cheap. That's, hey, it is what it is. If we clean out half the church tonight, so be it. But listen. You're not going to get anywhere in God by holding on to everything that you have. Amen. There's lots of people that, that want prayer for certain things, but they will not render what belongs to God. And you find yourself praying, and the heavens are like brass. And this is not. Now, listen, I know what it is to have been on that side. It's not fun. So, people can argue backwards and forward about what to do and what not to do. I'm convinced. So, so that don't have a problem. Let them fight amongst themselves. It is what it is. Hallelujah. So, this is how this is how we live, and this is what we believe. Now, everything has to be a revelation to you. You don't do anything based upon what I say or anybody else say. You do it. It's got to be a revelation because the enemy's going to fight you on it. Persecution and tribulation is going to come for the word's sake. So everything that you do, you better be a revelation. If not, don't do it. Are you okay with that? Just don't do it. Like Nike say, do it, just do it. Don't do it. <laughs> so remember that. Because this is not, listen, so many people have manipulated this. That people throw the baby out with the bathwater. So, I wanted to start that out at you at, at, at the onset. Hallelujah. But we're going to tie some stuff together tonight in a very powerful way. Now, I talked a little bit about what, what I want to talk about tonight, but it's going to go a little bit deeper. Hallelujah. Now, we're going to talk a little bit tonight. We're going to end up leading to the gifts of the Spirit, one in particular. 
But we can't do that unless we talk about this first. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. Those of you that have your Bibles, those of you not that just follow the screen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4. Oh my Jesus. Oh glory. Now we're going to start at verse number 1. Now let me remind all of you of something. We're not just preaching and teaching tonight. We're releasing the grace that's on the inside of us. We're not just giving you words, we're giving you spirit and word, right? Do you understand that? If we don't preach on the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, we don't preach anything. And you're going to understand what I'm talking about in a few minutes. Because we've had times where we have been preaching and teaching people who have gotten healed while the preaching of the word was going on. We didn't have to lay hands on anybody. And that's, the, that's a true statement. So, I'll put on my seal. So, we understand why we're saying what we're saying. But I will tell you this. In those atmospheres, we created an atmosphere of expectation. Because we want people out talking about the things of the supernatural. We wore them out. We hit the door running with those things. So faith was elevated for, for people to expect those things. When people would come to our home, the presence of God was there. Does everybody understand that? And when we went to have services other places, stuff would happen too. But you got to create an atmosphere. Somebody say atmosphere. atmosphere. You want to create an atmosphere. And the beautiful thing about that is you have the power within your own, within your own jurisdiction to be able to do that. You're going to get out of God what you put in. Now God may give you some freebies because of his mercy. But sooner or later, if you're going to get into the deep things of God, it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you time, and you are going to have to make some sacrifices. It is what it is. There are no shortcuts to power. Somebody say there's no shortcuts to power. It is what it is. Thank you, Jesus. No shortcuts. So, Let's deal with this quickly, or in the time of the Lord, I'll say this. Ephesians chapter 4, we're going to start at verse number 1. It says, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, be I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you, that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. That's for all of us. All of us. With all loneliness and meekness, with long-suffering, forbearing one another in love, Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Amen. There is one body and one spirit, even as you're called in one hope of your calling. Now, now what I told you, remember, we're going to eventually get to there, but we have to lay the foundation. All right? One Lord, one faith, oh my God, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in and in you all. Hallelujah. Point to yourself. He's in you. Now, verse 7 is going to be one of the scriptures that we're going to use as a foundation tonight. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. That's very important tonight. I'm going to read it again. But unto every one of us, every one, somebody say me. Me. Unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ on the inside of us. All right. I want to throw that in here for good measure. Wherefore, he said, when he ascended on, up on high, he led captivity captive and gave, gave gifts unto men. Now, he that ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. Hallelujah. He that descended is the same also that ascended afar above all heavens that he might fill all things. I got it right here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Circle verse number 12. Like I said, for those of you who have the Bible, but 
For the perfecting of the saints. Somebody say for the perfection of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the, ministry. For the edifying the of the body of Christ. So there is a work for work in the ministry for everybody. Amen. If you're a business person, there's work for you too. Amen. Now remember, everyone has the mandate to be carriers of the presence of God everywhere they go. Whether you're a business person, whether you're part of the fivefold ministry, you have a mandate to carry the presence of God everywhere you go. You house the Spirit of God on the inside of you. I'm, I'm not trying to keep from running here. You house the Spirit of God on the inside. Oh my God, I'm trying to be calm. Oh my Jesus. Oh God. Hey, come on. Those days of shyness and hunger, yeah. Hallelujah. Listen. Think about that. Your salvation has the benefit. And every one of you, whether you're at a mature state or at a, be a beginner state, you carry a grace. Does nobody understand that? And that grace gives you the ability to do what you do and to be able to share it with others. Does everybody understand? So we're laying the foundation. So as we review, verse number 12, it says, For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Verse 13, till we all, somebody say all, oh. come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge. Somebody say knowledge. Knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That is the purpose of the fivefold ministry. Yeah. All right? Hallelujah. For the perfecting of the saints. Yeah. Hallelujah. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body. Not just your denomination. Amen. That's right. But the body. Much of what has been established in the modern church world is based upon denomination, church cliques, and everything else. And there's people out there that are gifted with what you need. But because they're not fit in your particular denomination, you shut that door. So therefore you cut off the grace that God in his infinite wisdom was trying to send to you to help you go from one level to another. Amen. He cried by my son my And this is not a play on words. Everybody has a specific assignment with the grace that God's given. Hallelujah. And many times tradition and insecurity has shut the door from somebody being blessed by a gift. Yeah. Now we do not make the distinction who we're going to receive. Come on. Right. Not be blessed. When God makes an appointment and a decision of who he's going to use, he does not care what we think. That's right. That's right. Either you take it from the vessel that God sends or you don't get it. That's right. It is what it is. Because there's got to be a breaking down of pride in the church world. Amen. That's right. Because we have cliques, we have people that we decide we're not going to hear the word of God from anybody but other people. But other than those that we choose to help us, Lord. the devil is alive in here. Amen. He grew up on my Sunday, love on my kid, love on my Sunday. That's why much of the church world is suffering because they rejected who God has sent. This is why you have to have discernment. And if you do not have discernment, you're going to miss your time of visitation. Yes. Hallelujah. Now grace gives us the ability to do everything in God. Whenever God calls you, gives you a calling and a vocation, he equips you with it. Now, this is the thing. That grace has to be cultivated. Now, if I come up here to this pulpit and bring a handful of seeds, that symbolizes potential. But tell us, planted Ground's been cultivated, it's been watered. All you've been, all you have is seeds. But when it's been cultivated, you have fruit, right? Amen. Many people are giving the children of God seeds, and they're not giving them fruit because the giftings on the inside have to be cultivated. And I'm going to tie this together to one at a time. We are going to get there. <laughs> Hallelujah. So. When I got ordained as an apostle back in 1993, I may have been an apostle, 
but I wasn't ready to do what I do now. Does everybody understand that? Because I had to, I had to grow in what God had given me. It was deposited in me by the laying on of hands, by a divine appointment, and in the process of doing it, I had to grow in what God's given me. There's different degrees of, of, of the anointing based upon the grace. Yes. Now, you can have two prophets, two apostles, two evangelists side by side, but one has a grace that has been more cultivated than the other. Does everybody understand that? Yes. The beautiful thing about what God has given you you have the ability to cultivate what, what, he, what, he, what he has on the inside of you. Right. There are no limitations. Somebody say no limitations. no limitations. Now when God gave us the ministry covered in limited ministries years ago, that's what I was talking about. Unlimited. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just had a moment there. All right. So let me, let me get dignified again. All right. So grace. Every one of you have grace in here right now. You have something very powerful in the inside of you that has to be cultivated. Now, we're going to tie this to what, we, what else we want to talk about tonight. Which means you want to be in an environment where it can be cultivated. Now, in much of the church world, because many people do not have the grace for the people that are sitting in the congregation, a lot of people lose out. Now, Every now, 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 now think about what I'm going to tell you right now. Any church in America, in the world, there's a distinct possibility that sitting in that church are prophets, apostles, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Much of the way the church world is set up is not geared to cultivate the giftings on the inside. They want you to be good church members. Does everybody understand that? And we know this to be true because people have lived and died and have never reached their full potential. Because there was an environment of stagnation. Mm. Everybody understand it? And those that break out of it are the ones that normally succeed. Now, if you, if, like say for example, if you've been in a church, if, if your parents and your grandparents was in a specific church, and you inherit that, and you think that because they was there, you're there, you may have a calling on your life, and much of what goes on is not is not established to facilitate the calling. I'm going to tell you my my own personal life. I made the transition from one specific church that I was at. They didn't believe there was any more apostles for today. The they thought the apostles went out with all the apostles of the land. They had proper prophets too, and they barely accepted evangelists. And they tried to throw scripture at me to tell me why it was the case. Does everybody understand that? This is why you need the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I went through a three-month period of wondering if I was crazy because God was telling me stuff and they was telling me stuff that didn't line up to what God was telling me. No. They was telling me that I lost my mind. And I was the assistant youth leader. They still wanted me to be the assistant youth leader, even though I was crazy. <laughs> Imagine that. Because if I was that crazy, they would set me down. Yeah. Do you understand? So they was trying to put me in bondage. Uh oh. Oh, come on, my son. I've got the T-shirt on this. This is the reason why. Brent and I do what we do. Hallelujah. Now, I had to break three. Three. Now, mind you, this was back in the 80s, not too long after Jim Jones was bringing people to Guyana and drinking cyanide. They was afraid I was going to get involved in the cult, but they was acting cultists. Uh-oh. <laughs> Help us, Lord. Think about that. Think about that for a moment. Some of you are not old enough to remember that. Some of you wasn't even born, but still. Listen, but listen. The Bible is not meant to put you in bondage. That's right. It's meant to set you free. He cried by myself. So, in an atmosphere of freedom, there is a powerful potential for growth. Now, when we're talking about the gifts of the Spirit, 
There has to be an atmosphere where you can flourish in those things. Yes. Does everybody understand that? Yes. But in order for those things to be manifested, the grace for these things has to be has to be given out. Has to be put out there. Now we know this from, from when we was in Dallas. <clears throat> we, we were specifically geared to training prophets. But it's not as hard as it looks. You want to create an environment, somebody say environment. Environments. Where the giftings on the inside of somebody can come forward without being stagnant. Because in most places, they're going to fight you. And then you're going to wonder if you're crazy. And some people do not press through. They end up conforming and staying where they are. Some people live and die and never achieve everything that God's called them to be because they didn't have the ability to fight. Anytime somebody can tell you that what's on the inside of you is not of God when it is, somebody say, Houston, we got a problem. You need at the core to be able to hear the voice of God. And know the voice of God. And obey the voice of God. Nobody ever said that you was not going to get pushed back. Now we're telling you now, you are going to get some pushback. When you go on the place, because I've seen this, we're here to help you prepare your heart for what is coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 14 says that we be, that we henceforth be no more children, that means we're mature, we've grown up, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sight of men. And by and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie away to the sea. That was that, that means people can't trick you. You know where you're going, and you're not walking around here confused. Yes, yes. Right. There's lots of people in the church world that are confused, and I dare say that many of you are at a place where you're learning how to hear the voice of God. I feel this resonating in my spirit as I talk with you right now. And you need, somebody say confirmation. Confirmation. Confirmation solidifies your ability to know the voice of God. Now years ago, before I ended up in the church where I ultimately got ordained, I used to work in New Jersey. They had full service gas stations. They didn't have these self service. And I would go there early in the morning for my job and before it really got busy, as I'd be praying, things would just seem like they'd be just dropped in my spirit. It's almost like I'd have this sense of, 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 a, of a preaching a sermon, so to speak. Messages would be just flowing in my head, and I really didn't understand it all. And then later on that week or during the course of the week, I would run into a situation that confirmed what I was dealing with. I was learning how to hear the voice of God and how God was dealing with me. And it was important because when I got into it, got into certain areas, you need to be around people that will help facilitate the confirmation aspect of what's going on. This is why the prophetic is important. This is why the prophetic is so important. If you're in traditional Baptist church where there is no Holy Ghost, you're probably going to get a lot of pushback. The only thing that probably will be confirmed is that you don't need to be there. <laughs> it is a big deal to be able to hear from God. It matters because that is the essence of everything that happens in your life. Everything that you do, the places that you go or don't go, can be contingent on what, that's, uh, that what God tells you. Many times people just run, run, just running everywhere. And they're not taking the time to pray about anything. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. All good things are not God things. That's right. Something may be good, but it may not be God for you. Amen. It may be God for somebody else, but it may not be God for you. That's right. And you have to have some courage and some thick skin to be able to obey God. Okay. The worst thing, because I, I don't see this. Is to be out of the will of God. Doing something that you think is good. And then you 
wind up the devil start tearing you up. And you get mad and say, Lord, I was doing the right thing, but it wasn't his thing. Mm. <laughs> in this edifice, in this church, one of the things that, you, that needs to happen is your ability to grow in the sensitivity that comes from God. Amen. Yes, you're hearing the word of God. You need to be able to know the voice of God in addition to that. When you're riding in the car, when you're in the shower, wherever you go. Hearing the voice of God does not have to be a specialty for who? You holy people. Every one of you have the ability to know God's leading. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And I think that's important. So, so we're tying this all up in a nice little bow. So we don't want anybody here to be confused tonight. So, now, the reason why I mentioned the five-fold ministry, with every last one of those gifts, they carry a specific grace, which means they have a specific ability to do what they do. So when a prophet stands up here, an apostle, or an evangelist stands up here, they're standing up here, they're giving you a word, but they're operating in the delegated authority that God has given them which is God's ability, which is God's grace. They're giving you the word. When they pray for you, they're praying based upon the position that they have in God. Does everybody understand? Yes, they're believers, but they have a specific position in God, handpicked by him. So when we pray for people up here, we pray from the position that's been delegated by God. Does everybody, that's not being over spiritual. Because remember, it's God's giving grace. We cannot operate in anything that God has not delegated. Do you understand that? So when something is happening up here, it's based upon the predetermined grace that God has already given us. And that's the same thing with each and every one of you out here. And that's powerful. But whenever you get a field, you have to cultivate the field in order to get a harvest. Yeah. Does everybody understand? Amen. You have to cultivate what God has given you in order for you to produce fruit, as the scripture says. All right, so we're tying this together. So, we're talking about prophecy. Let me give you an illustration here. You got one person that changes spark plugs and oil, and you got another person who's a seasoned mechanic. When you need professional advice, who are you gonna go to? Are you gonna go to one who changes oil and spark plugs? Are you gonna go to somebody who has some experience? Now, we have to be very careful about teaching the gifts of the Spirit with people who are not mechanics. They change oil and spark plugs. You need practical experience to operate in in order for you to be able to do these things. Why? Because there's a grace that comes with the experience. Now, say you're called to be a prophet of God, but you're a baby prophet, so to speak. You're a prophet, true enough, but you have to cultivate what God's given you. All right? There's different levels in the gifts of the Spirit. And when you administer, you based upon, you, you, you minister based upon what you possess right now. Now, you have unlimited potential because God is in us. But you have to cultivate what God has given you. I'm trying to be calm. I feel like running. But listen, understand. There is no limitation. Somebody say there's no limitation. So, here tonight, we want to create an environment that you're free to be everything that God would have you to be. So we're talking about prophecy tonight, right? Now, we'll deal with that in a few minutes. I'm going to tie this together. Let us go to um, 1 Samuel. chapter 10. Now there's a reason why I'm going this way tonight. Because most people are sitting in places being spiritually dried up. Because there's something on the inside of them that's kicking to get out. And sometimes you've got to be careful about putting the fire out. Now one of the things that we have seen here is a hunger after the supernatural. And I think that's important. That's a very important catalyst for stopping 
stuff happening. There has to be a hunger for the supernatural. There has to be a hunger for the gifts of the Spirit. There has to be a hunger for you to mature in the things of God. Oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. Verse Samuel chapter 10. We're going to start at verse number one. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Karabah Basia. Hallelujah. It says, Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over to his inheritance? Talking about Saul. When thou art departed from me today, now Samuel has given him divine instruction, then thou shalt find two men. Now, I want you to see the progression that I'm getting ready to share with you. Find two men by Rachel's sepulcher in the border of Benjamin at Selzah. And they will say unto thee, the asses which thou wentest to seek are found. Talk, of, talk about being on target. <laughs> and lo, thy father hath left the care of the, of the asses and sorrow for you, saying, What shall I do for my son? Then thou shalt go on forward from thence, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor. This is specific instruction. And there shall there shall meet the three men going up to God, up to God to Bethel, one carrying three kids, and another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine. Now watch what happens. And they will salute thee and give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive of their hands. After that, thou shalt come to the hill of God. Where is, where is the garrison of the Philistines? And it shall come to pass when thou art come thither to the city, and thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psaltery and a tabret and a pipe and a harp before them, and they shall prophesy. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them and shall be turned into another man. Yes. Now Samuel was a prophet, was he not? Yes. Yes. I want you to understand that Samuel gives Saul specific instruction that he's to make this journey and once he comes into the company of the prophets, then he was going to have an encounter with the spirit of prophecy. And then he was going to be transformed. Not before then, but when. Somebody say when. when. Now, you can ask the question, why not, why not once Samuel spoke over him? Now, what we understand, now, when he came in the company of prophets, he was exposed to the prophet's anointing. Yeah. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. And when he came in, Immediately, once he got into the atmosphere of prophets, he was able, because the grace was there, to be able to operate in those things. And that's powerful. Now, it was established by the word of prophecy, first and foremost. Did everybody understand? Yeah. It was established by the word of prophecy, but not until he got into the company of prophets did it actually happen. Yes. Because it, because. In my thinking, it should have happened once he had the encounter with Samuel. <laughs> but it did not. Now, in this room tonight, and, sit in, in this, and this is very important, an atmosphere is gradually being created in here. Amen. So you can operate on the level of the gifts of the Spirit, and we're talking about prophecy. Now, a person who's operating in the spirit of prophecy has the grace not only to operate, but also to teach others to operate within that realm. Yes. Because they operate within that realm. Does everybody understand? They have the grace. Yes. Any grace that you have can be imparted, can be taught, but it has to be cultivated. That's good. Does everybody understand that? We got too many people who are not prophets trying to teach our being. So what has to happen? The grace has to be cultivated. I was not qualified years ago to do what I do now because I was a baby apostle and prophet. Yes, I had the title and the calling, but I had not cultivated the seed that was on the inside of me 
so I can produce the fruit. And I feed people based upon the fruit that has already been cultivated. Does everybody understand that? So we do not want you to be stagnant. Hear me clear. We want you to grow in the grace. We want you to cultivate the grace that is on the inside of you. Now, the atmosphere here is being cultivated to such a degree where you can grow. Amen. I promise you there's lots of places that you will be stagnant. Can everybody understand that? Yeah. Oh, my God. He corrupted my son. So we need to create an environment where people can be everything that God would have them to be. Amen. Now, every one of the gifts of the Spirit has a specific assignment. Does everybody understand that? Yes. But it comes with the grace. Now, let me deal with this. I'm going to give you a quick minute. Now, I may have given this before, but I'm going to give you a refresher. This hand, five fingers. This is the foundation, which is the teacher. This is the marriage finger. The ring finger, which is the pastor. This is the far reaching finger, which is the evangelist. Goes the furthest place. This is the one that points the direction. The prophet, he gives you the direction. And the apostle brings it all together. I want you to think about it. The apostle has the ability to touch all of these different levels. Now, it probably will take more than what we can do tonight. But when Paul went to many of his missionary places, he spent, I'm saying, six months. He said a period of time. In that capacity, even though he was an apostle, he was, act, he was acting in a pastoral role. Does everybody understand that? So he was an apostle, but he, he was pastoring people. Now in those situations, what they would do, after a certain period of time, they would install pastors. They would lay hands on people, set them aside, and then Paul would go into his next assignment. So it's very much conceivable that an apostle can be a pastor too. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. So sometimes the gifts, the, the ministry gifts can be interchangeable. Yeah. They make the transition, and when you install pastors, then they move on, but they up, but again, they operate based upon the delegated authority of the apostle. The reason why we have so much confusion in the body of Christ is because we don't understand how the fivefold ministry is supposed to work. Does everybody understand that? Yes. Now there's people that are pastors by grace, and they're nothing else. So there's a difference between an apostle who, who's operating as a pastor and a pastor who's a pastor. And a lot of church people who have a grace to be a pastor, they're trying to cultivate people that they don't have the grace to deal with. It's quiet here. <laughs> Bring it on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is why there's a lot of what we call, they call it order or lack of order churches. Because first of all, the operator of the spirit is always in order. Because the spirit of God, we're not talking about strange spirits. We're talking about the spirit of God. So there's a difference between being out of order and being out of alignment. They're not the same. Because you can, because if you're operating within the spirit, because first of all, the spirit of God can't be contained. And when, this, when we try to contain the Spirit of God, in a lot of places they'll say the person's out of order. No, they're not out of order, they're out of alignment. There's a difference. Out of alignment means you're not where you're supposed to be. Because I had that happen to me. And I know that. We was in a large church. And the ministers that they had appointed to do the ministry you see, and this is the thing that's very important to understand, and this is not bashing, this is just the way it is. In the church that we was in, a lot of times people, they would do a background check on people and make sure there wasn't a rapist or child molesters and stuff like that, and that's good. But they didn't check the consecration. <laughs> because when you've got people up there praying for you, and they can't pray themselves out of a paper bag. <laughs> That's a problem. Yeah, because in that sense, and bring no tangent. Because when we was there, people would come back to where we was. They wouldn't even go up to the front and get prayer. Seriously. Wow. They would. 
and I'm being nice about it. <laughs> Leave them alone and come back to them. Now, I wasn't looking for all that attention. Now, she'll tell you that's true. That is the truth. Because, listen, you can have the position, but not the authority. When man gives you authority, it's a very dangerous place to be. Because if you put in a place where God has not put you, the enemy's going to have a field day with you. So do not try to, to go someplace that you have not been appointed to go by God. Now, people who operate in the gift of prophecy are qualified. Those who operate in the gift of prophecy to teach on those things because they have the experience and they have the grace. Remember what I told you earlier about grace? I think that's important. So, the idea here is to create a grace where you can speak. Now, we want every one of you in here to be able to hear from God. We want you to be able to have a sensitivity within the realm of your spirit. Now, there is not, there's more than one way that God will deal with people because God deals with people differently. I can just look between friend and I. God deals with her differently. God deals with me differently. Now, when it comes to the voice of God, you're going to hear stuff in the spirit. You're going to see stuff in the spirit. You're going to sense stuff in the spirit. All of those things. You may smell some stuff in the spirit too. Now, when you start to operate in, in, the, in the word prophecy, when we talk about prophecy, we're talking about we're talking about predicting and foretelling the future. Does everybody understand that? It's going to be important. For a lot of people, that's the easiest thing to deal with when they're first learning how to operate, other than the gifts of healings, different things like that. Uh, because again, when you start dealing with word of knowledge and word of wisdom and God starts revealing stuff to you, sometimes that can be a little bit scary for some people. You might be afraid to step out of it because when you're dealing with word of knowledge, you're trying to, God's revealing stuff to you that they know, but you don't know in the natural. And you may be afraid to say those things. It's easy for a lot of people to prophesy and say things out. Even the scripture in 1 Corinthians 14 1 tells us to prophesy, the desire of spiritual gift, but rather that you may prophesy, which means another thing. You don't have to be a prophet to prophesy. That's right, that's right. Because we know all are not prophets, all are not apostles, but yet you have the ability, Paul says you have the ability to prophesy. Now, if you're a prophet, you, you, you better be prophesying. But you don't have to be a prophet to prophesy. Does everybody understand that? You need to be able to know that there's a distinction. You have the ability to be the, be the facilitator of the voice of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now you need to cover these things. Because the first thing, one, you've got to have a desire. Second of all, you need to be in an environment where that can be facilitated. And we see that happen. Now, you cannot be afraid at some point not to step out. Because that's the only way you're going to develop confidence that you're hearing the voice of God. And if you're in a place where you are wondering, say, tell me, I'm sensing this. But when you're talking about prophecy, you're talking about foretelling, right? You're talking about speaking some things. You can prophesy the word of God. You can, you can declare some things in the word of God. You can speak some things. And, and sometimes you, you, need, you need to practice declaring stuff. Does everybody understand that? Speak those things. Now remember, there's going to be times that the Holy Ghost is going to intertwine your thoughts and your speech and you're going to find yourself saying stuff under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Because a lot of people say something told me. You want to be able to graduate from something told me to know that you're speaking with thus saith the Lord. Because remember, when you're speaking with thus saith the Lord, it's an inspired word. It's very important. It's an inspired word. Now, what I've learned to do is recognized when I'm talking out of myself or when the Spirit is speaking through me. <clears throat> that comes through sensitivity and use. Does everybody understand that? When, when, you, when you spend time doing this, you, you instinctively know when God is telling you something. And I'm going to tell you because there was a time it was not like that for me. I'm telling you that you will get there. Hallelujah. 
I'm almost finished, believe it or not. <laughs> Listen. Every one of you have an assignment to get off to yourself and spend quality time before the Lord. Praise God. Spend quality time before the Lord. Get your piece of paper or a note tablet or whatever the case is and be open for anything that God would tell you. Whatever it is. You may wonder if it's a something that told me, but you have to start somewhere. Yeah. Because the scripture says, my sheep yeah. know my voice. Yeah. So if you're a sheep, you have no options. Come on. You have to know <laughs> when the Spirit of God is dealing with you. This is the other thing. It is liberating to know that God is leading you. Yes. Think about heaven and earth. The God of heaven and earth is leading you in the pathway. Now, let's be clear on something. Sometimes God may lead you down some pathways that may not look like it's him. Right. Yeah. I have seen a lot. I said, Lord, are you sure about this? <laughs> Seriously. Yep. But you don't need the voice of God for what is obvious. You need the voice of God for what you do not see. Because when the Spirit of God speaks to you, he takes the consideration stuff. He sees two or three weeks down the road that you don't see in the present time. Because your natural eyes will play tricks on you. The beautiful thing about the Holy Ghost, he can cause you to navigate through all of that. Now, what's going to happen in here is confirmation is going to be built in to what is happening in your personal life when you're not here. And when prophetic messages are released, hallelujah, it can solidify what's happening in your prayer closet. Yes. That's right. Because when we speak prophetically, it's designed to confirm and to establish the voice of God in your life. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, we operate in this pulpit based upon the years of experience, and all of them have not been successes. You can learn a lot from your mistakes yeah. and the mistakes of others, too. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But in order for the body of Christ to come together in the unity of the spirit, there, there has to be an unleashing of the, uh, of, the, of the ministerial gifts. And we're talking about the, the prophets tonight, right? In prophecy. We need the prophets that are, have the grace to prophesy to be front and center at some point. At some point. Maybe not at all. Because again, we believe in balance. I want you to hear me. Because a lot of times when people deal with Brent and I, they look at us as people that just prophesy. They don't believe that we can teach the word. They come to us primarily for, they wear us out wanting a word from God. And that may be one of the drawbacks because people think of you as being one dimensional. And you're not. We believe in the integrity of the word. Now, we create some controversy in our take on it sometimes, but we try to do line upon line. Hallelujah. Precept. Here a little, there a little. Thank you, Jesus. And when I stand in there to teach, I don't want to be left out there on a ledge. And say, ah, oh, apostle, we got you now. <laughs> you messed this up. <laughs> but remember, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, he's here to keep us on course. Now, for those of you that have aspirations of doing ministry, learn how to listen to the changes in your spirit. Those of you that are ultimately going to teach and preach, you want to be, have your lesson plan out, but be open for the changes in the direction.
correction in the course of what you say. Because when we talk about operating in obedience, obedience is the perfect will of God. So when we teach and preach, we want to be walking in synchronization of what the Holy Ghost is saying. We're not, our agenda is not important if it's not in line with what God would want to say. Does everybody understand that? You want to make sure that you are open. Now, God is not crazy. You will start to learn how to deal with changes in your spirit. There are things that will happen in your spirit when God is trying to deal with you. Ultimately, yes, they will. Because when I go places, there's things that happen within the realm of my spirit, and I've learned over the course of years to be able to know when something is happening. Now, when you leave here tonight, you want to make sure that you are sensitive to changes in your spirit when you go places. Somebody say class is in session. Class is in session. <laughs> oh, I feel this thing. Hallelujah. Yeah. Class is in session. You have a desire to grow in the gifts, right? You have a desire to prophesy, right? Yeah. That's the first requirement. Second thing is you want to be in an environment where that can be facilitated. That's being fulfilled. Now it's time for you to get to work. We want you to be mature in the things of God. Because there's going to be provision that's going to be tied in your obedience. There's people that God's assigned every one of you to reach. You don't want to do a lot of generic ministry. When I say generic, hit and miss it. It's good to have tracks. It's good to have those things. But you need to be able to discern the person who's in front of you. If he's an atheist, he might be, have had a bad experience, the reason why. And if the Spirit of the Lord can get you to touch something in him that the exterior that he's given you will not reveal, then you've got an open door. Somebody say open door. Open door. We need the Spirit of God to get behind the, the, the deep, deep, deep beneath the surface. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. You say, I know what you're telling me, but, this, but, this, but that's, that's not what it is. And you want to be able to get to that point. Yes. Where you can be able to discern. The true men and women of God will be able to walk in a different level of sensitivity. Now, oh glory. And God wants to use you in here tonight. Because this is the thing. Those of you that are here in here tonight, those of you that are listening to us, you are strategically engaged in what's happening here tonight for a reason. Because we believe that this, this, this is something that's been divinely inspired, oh my God, for every one of you in here tonight. Thank you, Jesus. You can walk, if you have a desire to be used of God tonight, you, you can have the utmost confidence that God wants to meet you at the point of your hunger. Now remember this. He will meet you at the point of your hunger. Yeah. If you do not want anything, God's not going to force it upon you. But if you want to walk in a deeper level of intimacy with God and be able to be a facilitator of the voice of God in somebody else's life, that's powerful, y'all. Yeah. To be able to give somebody, thus saith the Lord. Yeah. And you don't have to be high and mighty to do that. Every one of you have the ability to, to deliver the word of the Lord in you, the uniqueness that God has created you to be. You do not have to be a carbon copy of anybody in here. Do not try to pattern yourself off after somebody. Yeah. Because you don't know the price that they pay. You don't know you. Listen, you be who God has called you to be. Yeah. Walk well, worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Hallelujah. Yeah. I tell you, I feel like running, but yeah. I'm ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. 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 Use your people, oh God. Yes. Meet them at the point of their hunger, oh God. Yes. Bring forth your evangelists. Yes. Oh God. Yeah, bring forth your prophets. Yeah. And bring forth your apostles. Yeah. Bring forth your pastors and teachers. 
We need to be in proper alignment, beloved. Because in most places, everything is built upon the model of a pastor. You pastor, man, pastor of music, pastor of a light bulb community. <laughs> Nobody's an evangelist. Nobody's a prophet. Nobody's an apostle, but everybody's a pastor. And that's why the devil's tearing the church up. Because there is no authority. That's why there's confusion. Now, when you talk about operating in these gifts, the ministerial gifts, you're going to come under scrutiny. There's always going to be somebody who's going to question your call to be an apostle, a prophet, or an evangelist. But that's fine. That's fine. Because it's not the name that makes you, it's the ministry. Make full proof of the ministry that God has given you. Because if you're truly of God, you're going to get some pushback. Many people are afraid to say who they are for fear of the scrutiny that comes with it. If you don't believe in who God has made you, how are you going to expect somebody else to? You need to embrace who God has made you. It starts tonight. It starts tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, I feel I'm finishing right now. Everybody rest on your feet. Now, for those of you that may be struggling, how to hear from God. Remember, I gave you a homework assignment. You're going to need to set aside some time as the musician come up. Of you alone, because listen, you're going to have to learn how to hear the voice of God in, in, in quietness. Amen. Then you can hear God when you're around a lot of people. God has to train us how to hear what he's saying. Amen. You need to have some time alone. Yeah, pray out during the day, but you need to have some intimate time alone where you can be able to discern what's going on in your spirit. That's very important. Many people are too busy. God can beat you doing what you're trying to do. How many people got your day planned already what you're going to do? You want to make sure you have time for just you and Jesus. Homework assignment. Because in my spirit, God really wants to speak to you. And show you things to come. And I'm not just saying that as a cliche. I don't believe in playing with God's word. I don't believe in playing with God. We don't believe in proper lying. We don't believe God said it. We may say that I believe something personal, but I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say God said it if I don't believe he said it. You want to have integrity with, 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 with the voice of God. You want to have integrity. Hallelujah. Because we got too many people proper lying. And that's why people don't have any confidence in the ministry of proper today. Because they throw the baby out with the bathwater. No real men and women of God. People that love them, some Jesus and some Holy Ghost. Hmm. And you have to be able to discern. Be able to hear that voice. Be able to learn how to sense what's going on in your spirit. Allow yourself to see. Because some people will see open visions. Some people will sense, some people will hear things. And all of this is resonating in my spirit tonight. We're establishing in this place an atmosphere where you can grow. Day by day, week by week, all you need to do is be hungry. Be hungry.
Put it on my kids and I don't mess with Something's breaking in here as we pray right now. Let's, God, let's worship God in here.